Hey, everyone. So, yeah, I'm Teresa Nemeshani, and you're probably like, what? Um, yeah, that's from Austria-Hungary. My parents immigrated from there, and if you are from there as well, you would pronounce it Nemeshani Teresa. Yeah, um, my parents actually immigrated from Czechoslovakia, and if you're from there, um, or you're my age, then they probably came around 67, 68. Your dad is probably a badass engineer, and your mom was probably a vixen, and she may have been involved in avant-garde art. In my case, she actually worked on the first interactive film ever. Um, this is the refugee camp that my dad was in for six months. They immigrated because, or they escaped because they couldn't speak freely. Um, they were so excited to come to America to say whatever they wanted, and they were completely unfiltered by American cultural norms. So as the first child, I was the focus of all of their feedback. This is me at the piano. Um, every, all eyes were on me and making sure that I would perform. But, you know, I was a striver, so it was okay. Um, no problem. Now, um, eventually I got married. I had my first child. She's here tonight, Margo. And um, my dad was getting sicker and sicker, though. He was a bit old. What we did not know was that my mother had a, an explosive growth tumor in her stomach at the same time. So within months of having, um, having our child, uh, my father died and my mother died as well. This is a picture of her kissing her first granddaughter for the last time ever. Um, we, in fact, buried my parents together at the same time. Um, it was, a, a, being from a close family, it was very lonely and very hard. Um, and I particularly found that I missed having their feedback. I would ask, I had asked them for their advice all the time and now I couldn't. Um, I found that this, um, this really hurt. I felt particularly lonely when I had decisions to make and even sometimes angry, and as a new mother, I had a lot of them, many, many um, questions every single day. So I started to go out and kind of try to learn about decisions and why we feel stressed about them. And one thing's like a, a no-brainer, when we put off decisions, we feel stressed. Well, the thing is, if we um, bang through a whole lot of decisions at the same time, our decisions get worse. Oh my God, like this is a problem and it will drive you crazy. It does, yeah. So. How do we solve this? Well, I also started to learn about something called eustress, which is the positive stress that we experience when we play a game. So it kind of caused me to, to raise the question, could we take the stress that we sort of, uh, you know, wrap up around our decisions and somehow in a gameful way convert it into eustress? And I thought, you know, I think we can. And I think that we can do it if we take analog experiences that we're really uh, comfortable with, such as that time I'd spend with my mom just kicking about decisions I was making, or, you know, coffee with the girlfriends, or um, a cocktail party one glass of wine in. So we built it, and it's all about asking great personal questions and pulling them into one place. And um, so at this point, I've looked at, like, many, 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 many personal questions and I've become obsessed about what makes a great question because they're not all created equal. So I wanted to share with you tonight is what makes an awesome question? What makes a good question? The kind that will change you and make you yourself but better. Okay? So the first thing is um, it's got to be a decision. So when someone asks, am I pretty? That pisses people off because they don't know what to say. It's not a decision. It's a bad question. Don't ask if you're pretty. Not helpful. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, not useful. Um, the second thing is that the vote could swing either way. We've got a bunch of babies that are like amazing. They're 50, 50, 49, 51. Here Bobby Ann isn't sure if she should include her boyfriend's picture like in Facebook anymore. It was amicable, but she's just not sure. You know, does it turn other people off? Good question. Oh my God. Okay, so someone submitted this. I was like, oh, we need to take this down immediately, but in fact, it's an excellent question. This guy's best friend's wife sent it to him, texted it to him, and he wants to know, should I tell my friend or not? That's a really good question, and it could happen to you. The final thing is, the results matter. So on the night of our relaunch, it was also back to school night. Um, really important if you're a mom and my husband was traveling in Asia, should I go or not? Oh my God, I don't know. Well, guess what? 96% of the community said I should. So that's really what it comes down to. Asking the great questions creates the honest moments that help us be the best that we can be for ourselves and for the people that we love. So I have a challenge um, for myself and for all of us, which would be to ask excellent questions together and create one billion honest moments because I truly believe that it will make the world better and that this is something that we can do together.
Thank you. And thank you, Ignite. Thanks, Teresa.